Wake up at Holiday Inn Express to a can't-miss breakfast that's free with every stay. Count on all the hot, fresh coffee you need and an incredible breakfast buffet that has something for everyone, like eggs, cinnamon rolls, and even hot, fresh pancakes with all the toppings you crave. Next time, do yourself a favor and stay at a Holiday Inn Express with a can't-miss breakfast that's free with every stay. So, when you wake up at Holiday Inn Express, you'll wake up happy, a part of IHG Hotels and Resorts. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, sure. It might be a beautiful day out there, and I might got a few, like, let's see, probably got five days left, but no, not even that. Four days left. Hey, tick tock, y'all. Y'all got to get ready for something big. You're going to have to pay what you owe. And in case you don't know what that means, that means April 15th is on its way here, and, and <laughs> it is a Monday. So I think before you go out and start doing all that other freeloading stuff that you plan to do this weekend, it's time for you to take care of that tax day situation. Know what I'm saying? And while we're on the subject, before we get into it, welcome to the J-Man Show here on J360 Radio. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to Chumbacasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Here we are. Episode 96. Welcome to the J-Man Show, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Jay, a.k.a. J-Man, a.k.a. the leader of J360 Productions, a.k.a. the guy who runs all of this. And the truth is, is that, yeah, even I dread the... <laughs> shuddering over here because tax day is just around the corner after all i mean i'm not the only one that does because hey sometimes life just gets in the way and you just don't feel like reporting what you have to pay on you know what i'm saying especially when you know like damn is it april already well hey look look aside of all that though i mean it's it's not bad it's just you know letting the government know what you do and you see a long time ago it was based off of a long time ago, it was based off of, like, paying for, like, the war that we had over here, which was Civil War. And you see, um, if you live over in Maine and Massachusetts, right, you get an extension. But, however, whenever April 15th comes around here, you know, you should anticipate it. Actually, there's two other holidays that really don't get recognized um, as much as you think uh, that revolves around Tax Day, too. One's called Emancipation Day. Which dealt with the, um, you know, the celebration of African American slaves b- being emancipated from um, enslavement, and then you also have um, Patriot Day, which celebrates. Well, it's pretty much a, it's pretty much a central ho- centralized holiday over in Maine and Massachusetts that celebrates the Battle of Lexington and Concord, that initiated the Revolutionary War, which should be celebrated all the time around here, but. You know, they say it's celebrated now on the third Monday in, in April, but believe it or not, April does have, like, some hidden um, holidays in here. And Emancipation Day, I'm surprised nobody ever really talks about that. But, if you live outside the United States in Puerto Rico, Tax Day is usually on June 15th because of an automatic extension grant to filers due to Publication 54. But... But, you know, it was, um, you know, federal income tax was introduced to help fund the Civil War back in 1861 and has been repealed, readopted, and held unconstitutional. And it was off of assessments. And then, you know, taxes were varied by dates. And then, of course, you know, you had the Pollock versus Farmers Loan and Trust Company that challenged the constitutionality of the Gorman Tariff Act of 1894, which tax incomes over 4000 at the rate of 2%. And it was sent all the way up there to the United States Supreme Court in 1895. They thought that the act was that the acts on proportion income taxes on interest, dividends, and rents were 
effectively direct taxes. Therefore, it was unconstitutional because it violated the Constitution's right that direct taxes would be appropriate amongst the states. And then, of course, the 16th Amendment came to the United States Constitution. That was ratified. And then it went ahead and made the government the legal authority to tax all incomes without regard to the apportment requirement. So, you can see, as I use this, you know, you want to take a look at some of these days and see why it's such a big deal to go ahead and make sure you have your taxes ready, at least before the date. Now, while you're sitting here wondering, well, Jay, what does that have to do with me? Well, you're an American citizen and you probably work for a living and chances are the IRS is coming to get you. So, you don't want to get hit with no late fee or no penalty, do you? Get started on TurboTax or get started on H&R Block or just get out there right now. Of course, you got to pay some fees to them, but hey, do what you need to do so that you can stay out of trouble. You know what I'm saying? Because, um... Like, I mean, you can party some other time, but as long as you talk about where your money comes and where your money goes, you know, you'll be okay. And then, of course, you know, you can talk to them about getting an extension, you know, and then keep an eye on your forms. I know a lot of people are saying, well, you know, Donald Trump, his, his, um, his taxes are still, uh, still, still missing. Why, why should I file? Well, here's the difference between you and Trump, okay? Trump, in some cases around here, is a, uh, president per se and not to mention he's a he's also the establishment and at one time he was a very rich no no no, not one time he's still rich and he'll go ahead and let you know about that but there's still a case out there where he hasn't even filed his taxes for five years because those uh tax returns are still missing and missing in action I mean, it's not to say that he hasn't done it, but, you know, if he went ahead and did a whole overhaul and pretty much made a giant tax cut for the rich, you would think that he wouldn't have a problem filing, right? Right. So, and you look at the other side, you look at the Democratic Party and see what they're trying to do. Since everything is built on an anti-Trump agenda over there, you see that they are so hard-nosed and looking to see if he filed or not. And chances are... You know, he probably didn't. And if anything, there's people covering for him left and right. But however, just don't let the IRS come and milk you down. Make sure that you are paying your taxes and make sure that you're filing and getting all your stuff together. Because it is one hell of a mess. And if anything, the IRS is one of the one of the most underfunded levels of institution in our government, if you think about it. They don't care. <laughs> but they're not entirely heartless. All you got to do is just do your part as a citizen. And, you know, for the state extensions, every state has their own extension. If anything, this is more or less about you working with the federal. You know what I'm saying? And for those of you that get that two extra months in June 15th to file your taxes, you lucky sons of... <laughs> you know? Uh, and, you know, I just want to give you guys a quick little history lesson on it. I mean, because... Tax day just sneaks up on you if you're not prepared for it. Now, you're probably wondering, oh yeah, did you do yours? Yeah, I did mine all the way back in February, so I don't know what the hell you try to get at. <laughs> you late so-and-sos. Shoot. You gotta be aware of these things, man. Ahead of the game as much as you can. And then you got some people who work in businesses that don't give you your W-2s on time. So, you know, it, it, results varies amongst people. But it's just that, don't let it happen to you. Because a lot of people are just saying to hell with the government, but like, and I agree on some aspects, I do agree to hell with the government sometimes. They're only penny pinching and getting the best health care ever on the sweat of my brow. And at the same time, I'm not getting anything in return because they're trying to take away some parts of my tax return. And I get that. But I know a guy who pretty much is saying F the government and pretty much just trying to withdraw out of filing. So, you know, good luck to him. That's all I got to say, because if there's one thing that the government doesn't play about, sure, they'll play around with our infrastructure. Sure, they will try to incarcerate as many minorities as possible to fit that quota and go ahead and just overall just bully people around. But if there's one thing that they don't care about, right, the money. The greenbacks will always get first and center stage attention before doing the right thing. And God knows why, because it's a man-made object. And it just, it's weird to me on a few things. But hey, 
you know, I'm not here to drone you guys and tell you to go pay your taxes, but hey, pay your taxes, all right? Now, moving forward, outside of all that uh, plethora of uh, historical talk there, though I might do a little bit of a history show, I do want to say that my animation collection is coming together, y'all. Yeah, see, I um, I still have parts of the Dragon Ball set I need to get, and I was looking over at um, Doug the Complete Series, the Nickelodeon Doug, by the way, not not the crappy uh, Disney Doug. Even though you're say, probably going to say they take place in the same universe, yeah, I know, but I just did not like Disney's Doug. For one thing, it was always on the time slot where I could hardly catch the show, and then another thing is is that I, I just didn't care for the characterization of the characters in that series, whereas, like, in Nickelodeon's Doug, you know, I can relate to him, I can enjoy, like, the things that he goes through, but sometimes the stuff that he goes through in the Disney one is just so far-fetched and a big reach on levels, it's like, nah, I, I can't enjoy this, and not only that, they changed the music around, I guess it's because they had new ownership at the time, you know, so it's like, meh, not, not, it's not my Doug, you know, it's the same thing I feel about Ren and Stimpy, like, when, you know, Spike TV was doing their animation block, and they had Gary the Rat, they had, um, Frisk, no, no, Frisky Dingo was a uh, Adult Swim, but they, uh, had, um, I remember Gary the Rat for some reason. Oh, yeah, Stripperella, with, uh, Pamela Anderson Lee on there, which is self-explanatory, and then you have the Ren and Stimpy Adult Party Cartoon Show, and let's see, that was weird. Like, they would show the classic Ren and Snippy episodes, too. Don't get me wrong. But it, it it was weird. Like, first off, they were having... Like, it, it was implied that Ren and Snippy kind of were gay for each other. But then... But then they had... um. I apologize for that. That's just a wild app I have. It was implied that they were in a relationship together at some points in, like, the later part of the Nickelodeon show. Yeah, the subtext was there. But this show blatantly showed them pretty much doing, like, <laughs> going all out at it. You know what I'm saying? Now, I don't know what John Kay was going through at the time when he made that series, but he had full creative control. And remember when I said that executive meddling can sometimes kill a, can sometimes kill an idea? And a regular premise. Yeah, there are times where it's the other side of the spectrum. And it's just too much of creative control that will kill a series. Like, the premise for that series was so bad that Billy West, the original voice of Stimpy, and then he was the voice of Ren because John Kay got fired from the original show. You see, there was a point where he said no to doing that series because he said it would ruin his career. And you know what? He wasn't wrong because ever since that whatever the hell that was, was on, and it pretty much destroyed the image of Ren and Stimpy, even though Ren and Stimpy have a warped, corrupt image anyway. <laughs> yeah, man, I, I'm gonna probably go ahead and binge watch all of those, but pretty much destroyed their image, and he's out there now, he's a victim of me too, too, because, um, yeah, one of his old, P uh, one of his old PAs, that he worked with, uh, filed something against him because of, you know, something about, like, it, it's not sexual, but it was, you know, implied sexual, like, se he was sexually harassing her, you know what I'm saying? It's up in the air, I don't know all the details yet, but I do know that he hasn't wrote anything on his Spumco blog in a while, I'm hoping that he, um, bounces back from it, because the guy is a creator, the guy is good at what he does, I mean, don't get me wrong, like, he did the Rippin' Friends, too. And the Rippin' Friends was alright. Bizarre, you know? I, I like his... Like I said, the thing about John Kay is I like his style. I like the way that he created things, because he pretty much is reminiscent of Bob Clampett back in the day, you know? He was inspired by him. And then he was also inspired by Ralph Bakshi, who was one of the greatest um, animators of our time. Um, who also didn't really get a good fair shake after a while when Cool World came out. Or it wasn't just Cool World, it was it was the New Adventures of Mighty Mouse, which had a lot of subtext in it, too. Because there was a part where, like, he squeezed this flower to give him some extra strength, but it busted apart and looked like uh, Angel Dust. And they were like, oh, Mighty Mouse is doing drugs! We're gonna cancel this show. 
that's just the way it goes, man, when you have moral guardians out there that are saying, oh, yeah, well, well, I don't like any of this realism shown, but I would like to see something that would teach my kids something. And it's like, mm, okay. So in other words, you don't want the truth, you want a half-truth. You know? And that's an agenda thing, too. I don't, I don't know why people try to dictate and try to overrule and corrupt everything that's in front of them. I mean, I guess they can't handle the idea that the truth being exposed or somebody going ahead and presenting something to them that is not going to make them look good in one way or another. Or, as a way, some people are just natural control freaks and they have to go ahead and say, uh, 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 I want more control. I, I can't control myself by any means, but this isn't about me. I'm going to try to control what you make. I'm going to go ahead and hold, hold your stuff back. Yeah, yeah, I don't like that at all. And it's like, yeah, you know what? The heck with you. Here, you're going to have a take that then. You know, and that's when you start sneaking stuff in. Like, I think there's an episode of Tiny Toons Adventures, which John Kay reportedly did not like and thought destroyed the image of the Looney Tunes, which at the same time, you wonder, do the Looney Tunes have an image to destroy? I mean, because when Looney Tunes Back in Action came out, I, never, never mind, never mind, going back into it again, there was an episode of Tiny Toons Adventures that dealt with um, underage drinking, that I think you can watch it on YouTube, believe it or not, for now, for now, because YouTube's on this whole thing where they're just trying to copyright ban everybody on something. But it dealt with Hampton, Plucky, and Buster getting a getting a beer, and they were doing one one beer, and it led them down the path where not only that they sexually harassed the female characters on the show, but they kept doing a lot of outrageous things, and then they ended up dying at the end of it. But the message was there. It's like, you know, drinking one beer can lead to other things. Which, you know, is debatable. But then again, you know, underage drinking has its problems. Which is why, you know, you have um, reasons why you wait until you're 21 to drink. But like I said, sometimes you got to go through those things and you got to tell them a message at the end of it. Now, I don't know what the message of Ren and Stimpy was, the original show anyway. I guess that in the 90s, you can gross people out just by showing up-close look-ats of different things. <laughs> but I really saw what the message was for Adult Party Cartoon, and I was like, yeah, this, this is not my Ren and Stimpy, so the heck with that. But all in all, as a fan, I went ahead and I collected every single season set, and the three season sets are pretty awesome. The way they just worked on the aspect ratio and the sound and the comedy. You can see some of the things that were left out that was brought back in. And the show is that much better. But sometimes you just look at it, it's like, these things are a relic of the time and the past that they came from. They don't really need a reboot per se. I mean, maybe a reimagining for maybe the kids. Because they're trying to do that with Rugrats. But it's like, for me, the original humor... It's probably going to be gone at that point, but then again, you realize I shouldn't be watching Rugrats anyway, unless I'm making sure my kids, who aren't born yet, by the way, making sure my kids are seeing something that's presented, you know? So it's just little things like that, but I see that I need to get some more stuff. I need like, yep, I need three more of the Dragon Ball Z set, and this is pretty much, I think, the end of Cell and the beginning of Majin Buu, and you know, the Majin Buu saga just wasn't... It had its problems, yes. There were moments where, like, Boo would transform to Super Boo and then turn into Kid Boo and whatever sort of weird genetic stuff you can get out of that. Of course, he's been eclipsed now because of all the things that have been happening in Super lately. At least in the manga. At least in the manga, it's been kind of crazy what, um... Uh, what's his name? Uh, Mor Moru or something like that. Movu. Movu. Yep. <laughs> he's a Super Saiyan's worst nightmare out there absorbing Goku and Vegeta's abilities and stuff so now they're back on base form level which is cool because you know honestly and this is, might be an unpopular opinion but I'm going to say it ever since they kept getting newer forms and newer forms it's been kind of hard to keep up and I know like both of them have limitless potential and I like the way Vegeta is getting a lot of character development I really do I, I, I like the way he's coming on Goku's been the way that he has been but he's Getting, you know, I, I've always liked Goku and I always had Vegeta second, but now I got them on equal pars with each other. So it, it works out in a way for that. I just don't like when Super retcon certain things, you know, that, that I've grown accustomed to. 
And I mean, that's just me trying to break hold as a fan for so many years. You know what I'm saying? It's little things like that. It's kind of like with some people have a problem with Baruto and the original Naruto series from time to time. It's like, all right, you see where they go. You see where it is. And then they kind of broke the base because they got rid of something that was probably sacred to you. But you see the creator. The creator's trying to make newer stuff all the time. So you might have to give them some leeway so that they can go ahead and create. And that's just one of them things. But if it's something that was really, really close to you, you know, you probably wouldn't care as much. Well, no, 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 let me take that back. If it's something that's really close to you, you probably would give a damn more than anybody else would. You know, it's kind of like how some people feel about like Batman and Superman and pretty much like, like, like how Batman breathes in space or he's able to beat the hell out of Darkseid without armor. You know, it's like little things like that. And, of course, meeting the Ninja Turtles and beating all four of them, who should be pretty much accomplished ninjas at that point, but, hey, it is what it is. Which, by the way, that movie's coming out, too, and I'm excited for it, but you see, like, whereas I read the books by sneaking into the bookstore and reading them, <laughs> I need to go ahead and get the manga, co not the manga, get the graphic novels here first, and then get the movie when that comes out. I'm probably going to get them all in one swoop and just sit there and follow along from the book to the uh, movie. So that's going to be a nice spot here for the collection for the DC stuff. Uh, yep, here is the real Justice League movie I have. It's called Justice League War. You see, if you didn't like the live-action Justice League movie, which I recommend you watch at least once, and I'm not talking about those of you that are on Twitter screaming for the Snyder Cut, which, by the way, are you guys mad at him still, or are you not mad at him anymore? Because a lot of y'all tend to flip the script when it comes to him. You know? I mean, the man had a tragedy during the production of the movie. Things have changed. Stop screaming for a cut of a film. I mean, do you want the assembly cut of his movie? Like you did with Alien 3? Because it's, it, it's really interesting to me why people would go ahead and keep going for a cut of a movie that, you know, we're, we're moving past that. They're finally getting where they need to be with their series with Aquaman and Shazam. The thing is, is that we kind of have lost a lot of people who were cast as Justice League members. So there's going to be some soft rebooting going on here or there, or it's going to be like Crisis of Infinite Earths. Which would be a very interesting take. Anyway, but like I said, if you didn't want to look at um, the Justice League live action movie, well, you can look at Justice League War and you can look at Justice League Throne, for, Throne of Atlantis. Those are some pretty quality films here. I mean, especially when you saw them come together and they were fighting against Darkseid and the animation's on point and the, the whole thing between all the characters in there. And for those of you that like Shazam, a.k.a. Captain Marvel, for those of you that like Shazam, he's in those movies. It checks out. Go ahead and, and, and look into those. I highly recommend it. And then for those of you that like uh, Batman and Superman team-ups, which I'm in that category, and everybody's like, oh my god, what is wrong with you? And it's like, no, 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 Chief, what is wrong with you? Batman and Superman Public Enemies, a very, very phenomenal film. And then, of course, you got the death of Superman, which, um, which was a good story at one point. Then you realize, like, oh yeah, we, ha we have to bring him back, so we just make it seem like he was sleeping for a while. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, it's one of them things that you got to look at. Like, you know, and then when you take a look at the reign of the Superman, that was pretty good. And then there's another one coming out, too, called, um, I think it's Justice League versus the Fatal Five. So, yeah, like, DC is killing it in the animation market. And they have been steadily for quite some time. I mean, I'll be honest with you, in the books, I never liked Damian Wayne. I think Damian Wayne was just a pretentious little punk. And yeah, so a lot of y'all probably say, well, Jay, he's part of the League of Assassins. That's all he knew. Yeah, okay, fine, whatever. Sure he is. I give you that. But it still doesn't deter the fact that he had creator pet status just like how Red Hulk did during his first appearance. I just didn't care. And things have gotten better. But at the same time, though, when I'm playing Injustice 2 and I'm just playing as Batman beating the living crap out of him, it's just refreshing, <laughs> you know. But the animated movies, however, with Damian Wayne, they're really good. 
I mean, it made me appreciate the character a little bit more. So I'm able to lighten up to that. See, it's like, like I said before about things that we as fans hold sacred. Yeah, I kind of had to break that a little bit. But, you know, whenever, like, Damien's being a being a giant douche, I could just beat the crap out of him on Injustice 2. and be like, yeah, that's how I feel now. I'm your father now. <laughs> but you know it's a little things like that and i know like this this week we got some pretty good releases coming uh we have mortal kombat 11 which i've spoken about on two different episodes so far it's finally going to land on the 11th which is tomorrow so i know a lot of you gamers out there are ready to jump in and commit all sorts of fatalities and show them off on the internet to embarrass your rivals which is great which is great. I hope to jump in and step in there with you. I mean, I've just been so busy building J360's video side, and, you know, I haven't really been paying too much attention to the gaming cycle of things, which I regret because I also know that Crash Team Racing is coming out with a reboot of sorts next, uh, it's either next month or it's in June. I think it's most likely in June, though, but, like, I know, like, all that stuff is starting to come, and I'm like, you know, <laughs> I really got to jump back into the power play scenario as soon as possible, because I just can't have it where, like, um, I'm missing out on certain areas. Even though I've been saying about Mortal Kombat 11, it's just, I love fighting games, but, you know, I'm hoping that I get my money's worth with this, even though it's like the timelines are all battling each other, and that. <laughs> slowly but surely it's becoming the game that Mortal Kombat Armageddon should have been even though Armageddon wasn't that bad I think the worst one in the original Mortal Kombat lineup for me anyway for me was Deception Mortal Kombat Gold which is pretty much Mortal Kombat 4 Dreamcast edition um yeah yeah just no 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 not just those two Depending on what version of Mortal Kombat Trilogy you played, see, I had the one on um, Nintendo 64, which was, which was fun for its time, you know, because it had so many different modes in there, and you could have like the tournament set up and scenario. Yeah, that that mode was fine. It was the one on PlayStation that ran with god awful frame rates and really really slow on areas, and then uh, you got Mortal Kombat. Remember when they were making single player versions of Mortal Kombat games too? Like, it was Mortal Kombat Mythologies uh, Sub-Zero, <laughs> which at the same time, at best, you just really wanted to play Mortal Kombat 1, but you kind of wanted to see what his story was, because uh, Annihilation came out and just totally ruined the character. So you got to see, like, the this, this wasn't, like, even that Sub-Zero. This was the older, more mercenary killing Sub-Zero. Like, I was looking back at it, and I was like, hmm, was the game that bad to play? And then I fired up the emulator and played it. And yes, yes, even to this day, it's still a pile of <laughs> excrement. And the truth is, is that, like, I went over to watch the Retsu Prey video on it, and man, <laughs> I am glad that I could only get to the first two levels, because it seemed like the other levels at the end of it, they were just tedious as hell, and not only that... The cliffs were so high up, you could get vertigo just by jumping around over there. And it was like, nah, I, I, I don't care for any of this right now. If anything, it probably should have been a movie. And then, of course, the PlayStation version of it had those horrible CG moments and, you know, the motion video that just sucked. But, like I said, if anything, I probably would have preferred it as something different. And then, there was also another game that was going to come out to it in that same canon that was called... um. It was called Special Forces, and thank God that didn't come out. And there was also another one that was coming called, um... No, no, no. This one did come out. It was called Shaolin Monks. And it dealt with Kung Lao and Liu Kang. And it was done very well. So, you know, sometimes of varying measures, those games are pretty good. And then, of course, as I was talking about DC Universe, and now I'm talking about Mortal Kombat, it's ironically that those two universes would meet up. And depending on who you talk to... I actually thought it was fun, because if anything, it was a prototype to Injustice anyway, and it was a way of saying, hey, guess what, NetherRealm Realms is a part of WB Games, and who wouldn't like seeing Sub-Zero vs. Batman? And as soon as I saw that in the, in the trailer for it, I was like, I knew I had to get that game. So when I bought it for the Xbox, and I sat there and I was playing it, yeah, sure, I might not be able to do Fatalities as Batman, but, <laughs> I mean... The playstyle was unique, 
And I'm going to give it like one of those underrated approvals, you know, from me. Because there's nothing I need to redeem in that. Now, I'm sure there's other people out there who say, What is he talking about? That game sucked. Well, you see, that's the difference of opinion between you and me. Now, the thing about Mortal Kombat 11 is, I'm not going to go in full based off of like, say, Oh yeah, this is going to be the greatest game of all time. I'm going to treat it with the grain of salt that it deserves. And I'm going to go ahead and play it bit by bit, and then who knows, I'll probably do like a little thing for J360 TV where I review the game. So we'll go from there. Yeah, which by the way, for those of you Power Play fans out there, and those of you that were following the website for a time, I am going to go ahead and work on the website again and start putting up, you know, reviews like I used to. But, I figure, hey, let's just go ahead and do a couple of videos with that, so you got that coming for J360 TV. Yep, you guys got something interesting to look forward to, and J360 TV will start in June. Oh yeah, regardless of what, I'm, st I'm going to start working on that. Now, whether the J-Man show is going to be a video show, we shall see. We shall see, because, I don't know, I just like it when it's ready, because it's personal to you. However, there's another thing that's coming out too. April 12th, Hellboy comes. I I'll tell you. I'm psyched. This guy is like the second coming of Ron Perlman. He just fits the mode. Everything about him is excellent. And not to mention Mila Jovovich as the evil witch that wants him. This movie is going to kick some ass. And, and it's like that third Hellboy we never gotten, you know? Yeah, sure, it's a reboot, and sure, a lot of, I know how a lot of y'all feel about it, but oh, a lot of other times, it's like this. There's a lot of greatness that can be made with this. And you just can't hold out for another movie that's going to never come to being, you know what I'm saying? Then again, who knows? Maybe Gloomio del Toro and Ron Perlman could make like a animated sequel to it. Because, I mean, they're both up there at age, right? So, who knows? Actually, yeah, yeah, truth is, is that that would actually work, right? But I know some of y'all have been psyched about it because, see, I just found my Hellboy uh, collection right here. Like, I still got my graphic novel for, like, when he took on the, the frog assignment. And I still have, like, the animated movies that I could just sit back and watch along with the first two films. Uh, like, you know, looking back on it, though, I think the Golden Army... I think the Golden Army gets a lot more flack than it deserves because, honestly, they said that they were going to go ahead and show the more fantastic elements this time... And I thought it was a good take, a breath of fresh air from the first one. And which, that's what all sequels technically should be. You know? Like, this this was okay. It's not Ninja Turtles 3 bad, but it's good. You know? Matter of fact, it holds a candle to the other one. And there's still that ending that will never get resolved, which is kind of bogging if you think about it, because it's not helping... Like, w w is he going to bring forth Armageddon? I mean, what's going to happen with the two two babies that are inside Liz right now, you know? It's like, we will never know. That That's that gray area, you know? And, and it kills me. But, with this new Hellboy coming and all the action pack sequences and everything is just breaking loose, I can't wait. Like, if anything, that's going to be my sleeper hit for 2019. Yeah, because if anything, that movie just went ahead and replaced all the hope I had for a Nightwing movie that was supposed to come out this year. By the way, thank you, WB. Thanks a lot. <laughs> but yeah, that movie right there is going to be um, action-packed the way I want it to be, so I'm excited for it. And I probably mentioned that multiple times, knowing me. But hey, it has to be done. Like I just hope that this time, because every single superhero movie or comic book based movie is prone to getting three films i just hope we get a, a nice fresh trilogy out of this one and something that's gonna you know enlighten and show like there's a lot of wealth in this character you know but of course i can't necessarily judge the movie yet without seeing it so when i go to see it then i can probably go ahead and do a, like a review for it but a lot of y'all are not too hung up about hellboy right now a lot of y'all are actually anticipating Avengers Endgame, which is, at this moment, at least a less than a week a no, 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 a week and so away. So, yeah, yeah, about about two weeks and a half, I'd say. Uh, and speaking of which, I gotta go ahead and start doing my marathon for that. That's gonna be the next step. 
Matter of fact, I'm going to start doing that this Friday. I'm going to go ahead and do all the Phase 1. I'm going to do half of Phase 2 on Saturday. The other half of Phase 2 on Sunday. And then from, you know, from then on, I'll be doing some live tweeting on the J360 page too. So, you know, you can all join in. That would be kind of fun. Those of you in the podverse, maybe y'all want to jump in on that? Maybe? Who knows? Y'all been real quiet lately. (laughs) But anyway, I got to get ready for that. However, uh, we are getting closer to the end, guys, so I just want to let you all know that it's been fun going on 96 here, talking with y'all on a bunch of things. I mean, it seemed like there wasn't too many going on. I had to throw out the old idea because it was just too big. I might as well have made a movie with that. So I wanted to go ahead and let you all know like how pretty much things have been, like the animation collection here. Oh, which, by the way, I finally got Rocky and Bullwinkle. The whole series. Just like I mentioned last time, I finally got it. Caught it on a good deal because that was like priced at, it was priced at like 65 bucks for it, but I managed to get it for at least 45 So, <laughs> hell, shoot, I'm not going to leave that stuff out there. I said, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get that, and then I'm going to go ahead and get me a nice cold brew and sit back and start watching that at night. So, yeah. And by the way, you should try it sometime, watching Rocky and Bullwinkle at night. It's like therapeutic. <laughs> Oh, man. But hey, let's work on some connectivity here. Let's work on some interpersonal communications, right? If you've watched any single J360 show and you have questions or you want to, you know, come in and chime in and give your two cents a couple of times, hey, feel free to let me know. All you got to do is email me, j360productions at outlook.com, or best bet, call the hotline. That'll be 240-903-1634. Once again... For those in the back of the room, that'd be 240-903-1634. You guys can connect and talk to us at any time on our social media, on our hotline, on our email. And, you know, if any of that stuff is really, really funny or clever, we'll read it on air. And me and Alan from the Cyclone actually have a new series coming up. That's going to happen in May. So you guys will look forward to what that is. And, yes, it was from the notes in 2018. So, hey, just stay tuned and we'll see what happens, all right? Anyway, I got to get off of here, guys, because I got to go spend time with the fam. And I'll be seeing y'all later for episode 97, okay? This is the J-Man signing off. I want you all to take it easy. And we'll catch up again. Who knows? It's a pretty big week. You guys think you're ready for a double special this weekend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see about that, huh? All right. But until then, this is the J-Man signing off. Peace. Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Forward, prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.